Hello and welcome to this exclusive Apex interview with Intelsat, operator of the pioneering epic fleet of KU band high throughput satellites. And as many of you watching may already know, soon to be owners of GoGo's commercial aviation business. Joining us today from Intelsat is Frederick Van Essen, uh, VP of Aviation. Frederick, welcome. Hi, Marianne. Wonderful to be here. Thank you. You are new to this role at Intelsat, but you're definitely not new to the industry. So can you tell us a little bit about some of the uh, experience and ideas that you're bringing to the business now? Uh, yeah, definitely. Well, um, I've, I've been for a long time with uh, airlines um, and um, also uh, spent quite some years in uh, the satellite industry, uh, specifically on uh, in-flight communications. Um, so that's that's experience that I'm bringing to this, uh, this role at Intelsat. And clearly Intelsat is shifting from being uh, a wholesale provider of satellite capacity um, now to uh, a, an operator that's actually uh, vertically integrating and moving closer to customers. And especially in this area, that's, uh, that's where I'm bringing a lot of uh, experience that will help. Amazing. Uh, you talked about moving closer to customers. And, and of course, we talked about the GoGo acquisition, which is in progress right now. That's going to bring you a lot closer to your customers as well, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. There's a fantastic team at GoGo um, who've been leading the IFC industry, I would say. Um, and uh, they're serving uh, the, like the, the top airlines in, in the world. Um, so all of that experience is, is a great help um, uh, moving forward at Intelsat with uh, the plans to, uh, to, to change the experience on in-flight connectivity. Okay. Um, and, you know, what's the level of airline relationships, I guess, that they're going to be bringing? Is there a lot of new clients that are coming along with this? Well, GoGo is, of course, uh, uh, bringing with them their existing customer base. Um, but beyond that, GoGo is very well known within the industry and has many relationships. Um, so uh, clearly with uh, the, 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 the bringing of, of GoGo and Intelsat together, um, there's going to be an exciting roadmap uh, that's going to bring new products and services to customers uh, worldwide. Um, and it's going to bring it to the existing customers. Uh, clearly, uh, we're expecting many new customers will, will join in that as well. And that also brings a lot of antenna technology into your wheelhouse as well, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, GoGo is bringing their industry-leading 2KU antenna, uh, which I think is generally considered to be the best antenna for uh, in-flight connectivity. And it's not just the antenna, eh? it's, it's, it's a lot more uh, equipment on the aircraft uh, that is running services uh, like uh, GoGo Vision, uh, IPTV, uh, services like that, uh, managing the traffic on and, all, on and off the aircraft. Um, so all of that is, is, is being combined now with Intelsat's um, uh, satellite network, which is uh, around 50 satellites around the world. Uh, so a massive amount of capacity, which is also going forward, going to be much more designed specifically for aero. Um, so bringing that together, I think, is a, is a huge opportunity for, uh, for the industry and for airlines as, as customers. Okay, and all of this uh, means a lot of vertical integration, basically, for Intelsat. So how does this vertical integration of the company remove barriers and basically help enable, you know, what we all want to see, which is free Wi-Fi for everyone? Yeah, definitely. Well, um, the, the industry has been hampered a lot uh, by um, a, a, a business model with uh, lots of parties in between um, from satellite operators all the way to the customer. And uh, the parties in between haven't helped in uh, getting to the, uh, let's say, best economics for the industry. That's one. But also it has made it more complicated to actually improve products and design them uh, for, for the future. Um, so um, satellite operators have long uh, roadmaps, long-term plans, um, and that's actually very much in line with the kind of decision-making you see at airlines. Airlines take 10, 15 year kind of decisions on, on their fleet and how they, uh, how they want to equip their fleet. Um, I think with that vertical integration, we're now bringing um, that, that, that whole uh, offering uh, from the satellite operator and, and the service providers uh, together so that you can now talk to airlines as a, as a, as a large 
and reliable partner, um, not for the next one or two years, but actually for the long term. Um, and that means you can make commitments that were not uh, being or couldn't be made really uh, before. Um, you can also talk about uh, product roadmaps, technology developments that take much longer than, than just one or two years. And, and I think that that will appeal to, uh, to airlines. It also allows us to explore new business models. And you mentioned free Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, that's sort of the, the, the holy grail, I would say. I mean, if you look at hotels, they started off with people uh, having to book individual sessions. Nowadays, we, we all expect that to be there as a, as a, as a, as a, as a standard feature. Now, I, I think that's what we'll see happening in the next decades for, uh, for aviation as well. So you talk a lot about roadmaps, roadmaps rather, and commitment there. Um, how has that changed in the wake of the global pandemic that's going on? Do you find that roadmaps are changing or people are making different commitments, fewer commitments, maybe more long-term commitments? Uh, what are you seeing there? Well, definitely COVID has a lot of impact. I mean, it's, 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 it's painful to see how much uh, the travel sector in general and airlines in, in, in particular have been hurt by, uh, by the travel restrictions and the impact of COVID. Now, we see some positive signals. I'm hoping vaccines will be around uh, quickly and, and, and that will help uh, restore the, 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 the sector. Uh, but definitely it puts airlines today in survival mode. Um, however, um, with some of the light returning at the end of the uh, tunnel, we're seeing airlines also slowly uh, uh, starting to think about what is going to be post-COVID, what, what is going to be the new normal that we need to operate in. And um, interestingly, you see a lot of airlines actually uh, parking very old fleet um, and retaining much newer fleet. Now that newer fleet is more digital, more equipped with sensors. All of that is going to be um, driving to a certain extent the, the, the further digitalization of airlines. They realize they need to be more resilient and, 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 and more robust to deal with quick changes. Um, and connectivity, connected services can actually help a lot. So beyond just passenger connectivity, there's actually going to be a huge market for these digital connected uh, services, in my view. Um, and that's going to help drive this, this industry long term. So in the short term, definitely it's, it's not going to be a great uh, uh, market, but this will come back. And still, if you look at long term, uh, the predictions are still that this is going to be a double digit growth market um, in, in the coming years. And actually Airbus um, uh, 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 told us recently, they expect every aircraft that comes off the production line by 2030 to be standard equipped with full connectivity. So this is going to go main uh, mainstream and, and, and standard. Um, and, and that's what we're playing into. So this is a, a long term play and not something for, for just next week. Got to play the long game right now. <laughs> yep. Definitely. All right. Uh, changing topics now. You guys are working on a survey together with the Seamless Air Alliance. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, your partnership with them, why you're working with them on this survey? Uh, and what is the focus of the survey? What are you trying to learn? Yeah, so actually this, this ties in nicely to the previous uh, uh, question we were, we were discussing. Um, our work with the Seamless Airlines is actually to uh, uh, take away another uh, uh, stumbling block, I would say, in the industry. Um, uh, the industry has, 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 wanted, has wanted to make the experience on board um, as, as easy and as frictionless as possible. Um, and it's far from a seamless experience today. Um, often you need to purchase separate um, uh, Wi-Fi passes or, or, or sessions. Um, you, you can't just use your mobile phone, for example, to roam onto the onboard network, um, uh, things like that. Um, also, the equipment is still very much separate and different between different providers. Now, what we're trying to do with the Seamless Air Alliance is actually um, promote openness in terms of standards in the industry to make it easier for airlines um, to, to make choices and, and, and change their choices, but also to help them retain value. Today, if you lease an aircraft and you need to return it at the end of the lease period, um, often it cannot be used elsewhere in the world. Um, you have to take off the equipment and then uh, the, the new uh, party that leases the, uh, the, the aircraft needs to install new IFC equipment. That is cumbersome, it's expensive, and it's a barrier that, that doesn't help. Now, the Seamless Air Alliance is all about trying to, 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 to remove those barriers. Um, and actually with the Seamless Air Alliance, we're working together now on, on this survey um, because we wanna get insights in what has changed in the industry due to COVID. 
So um, what we were just talking about, uh, the, the views that we hold on uh, uh, what is going to happen long term, what's going to happen in the new normal. Um, we are actually asking airlines um, and people in the industry um, how those things in their view actually change to get a better grasp on it. So um, basically from, from speculation, turning it into something that is much more of a consolidated industry view. Um, that's what the survey is all about. Um, and we're planning to release that to the general public uh, on um, the 8th of November uh, during an uh, uh, online event with uh, FTE Apex. Just finally to wrap it up, Frederick, what's the core message that Intelsat just wants people to take away or to know about them right now? Yeah, I think the, 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 the best message to give is um, the industry is changing. IFC, as you've known it, um, is, is no longer there. Uh, we're going to make sure that you can move forward and get everybody free Wi-Fi on board. I don't think anybody would uh, argue with that. It's a it's a admirable goal. So thank you so much today for your time, Frederick. My pleasure and uh, great being here. Uh, great talking to you again, Marianne. Great to see you again. Best of luck with the rest of the acquisition and integrating that business and also with your um, exhibition at the FTE Apex Virtual Expo.